Next Friday, October 22nd, we're going to be giving a U-Scope away to a member of the core or premium membership site. Guys, I see a lot of people joining in free, and I do appreciate that. That's cool. Believe it or not, when you sign up for the free, it actually costs me. I got to pay per month per user of the free, but that's okay. Sign up for the core or premium. That's a $10 a month subscription or higher, and you will be entered in to win a U-Scope. What's going on, everybody? Brian Mann here, hands-on auto training. End of day, October 14th, 2021. Got a couple updates for you. First of all, we've got that uh, 2014 GMC Terrain that we dealt with a couple weeks ago. We've dealt with this car twice. The first time I told them, they swore the uh, engine uh, camshafts were perfectly in time. And I said, well, it's out of time. It's got to either have a slip reluctor or whatever. And they took the exhaust camshaft out, swapped it out, put it back together, and improperly timed the motor. So um, whether that camshaft was actually out with a reluctor or not, I don't know. I don't really get into doing the mechanical end of things. But they went through it over the weekend, got it all timed up, and it's running good. So that's a beautiful thing. Next, we got that 2016 Malibu that I've been dealing with since last week, but we dealt with it yesterday, the stall issue. I did not get back on site with this. However, the technician, Doug, uh, gave me a call and told me what he had found. And guys, I can't explain this, but here it goes. He says that he was uh, checking the intake manifold bolt torque, and they're all tight. And then he went to, uh, he saw the throttle bodies right there, and he found two bolts on the throttle body that were like finger loose, not even tight whatsoever. Now, I can't explain how this uh, fixed it, but he says he tightened those down, and the problem has not uh, come back since. He's driven it all day. In fact, the vehicle's been released to the customer, so I really do hope that's the only problem. I can't explain it because the fuel trims were good. Usually on these turbo engines, you'll get some sort of like boost code or like airflow performance type codes when you have an air leak somewhere, but we didn't have any of the above. So I'm hoping it's fixed. I don't have a way of explaining that. Now, I want to let you guys know we had quite a few comments of people trying to help me out, and I do appreciate all of it. A lot of people were talking about the uh, making sure the transmission was updated all the way it was, uh, also to make sure that uh, the fluid level and uh, type were correct, and they were, to the best of my knowledge. A lot of people were talking about torque converter clutch solenoids going on uh, randomly. Uh, that's a lot of people were talking about that. I agree, it feels like that, and you saw that engine jerk. Um, but the long story short is I appreciate everybody's comments, input, and concerns there. Um, if this thing comes back and I get to take another look at it, I'll let you know. Next up was a 2012 Ford Edge. We had to duplicate a key and program a key. I was using the Auto Pro Pad, hoping to get around a 10-minute learn, but that didn't work this time. We had to go ahead and do the whole 10-minute learn on this one. But it was all good, no problems there. Next up was a 2007 Lincoln Navigator that had an um, intermittent, it didn't do it all the time, lack of power. It really feels like it's either a multiple cylinder misfire, clogged or restricted exhaust, a bad mass airflow sensor, low fuel delivery. Um, the fuel trims are about positive 10 all the time. Total fuel trim correction for both banks is about positive 10 as we're cruising down the road. Now the problem I have with this vehicle is coming back on my test drive, the uh, serpentine belt blew off of it. It got wrapped around a fan clutch and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I was not able to continue my diagnosis. We'll have to go back on that one. Speaking of fuel trims, I've been working really hard on my fuel trim video. It's nearing completion, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm almost there. I've been working on this for like a long time now. Here's a couple snippets of it. I think it's safe to say that in a perfect world, with this trim at zero and this wheel centers itself, this would be zero short term and zero long term. As I start to go here, you can see this vehicle is pulling hard to the left. So I have to add some right long term because I got to keep on adding this right short term all the time. I get tired of adding right short term. I got to add some right long term. So if the ECM detects the exhaust is lean, we're going to have to add fuel and you're going to see this little red dot start to go more positive. Okay, so in this example, we're at plus 10. Here is the same chart we had before, but we added another line segment to it. On the top, we're going to have our short term fuel trim and we're also going to have uh, for this time, we're going to have a little bubble in the middle for zero. And on the bottom, we have our long-term fuel trim with it's at zero as well. Now, on a vehicle that's running perfectly in a perfect world, you're going to see these uh, long-term and short-term be right at zero. As the fuel pressure starts to drop, watch what happens to this short-term. Our fuel pressure's going down, and our short-term's climbing. Our long-term isn't climbing at all. But if I add the fuel back in, you can see the short-term goes right back down. Next, we had to program a key for a Chrysler 200. Very easy, no problems there. After that, we got to go back. We're back with this 2011 Town & Country. This is the one that had the ASD relay code, the fuel pump relay code, and the AC compressor uh, codes all set, and it was a uh, no crank, no start situation. 
and we found that we did have the power or the battery positive going through the primary side of all those relays down to the engine control module. We do have the used engine control module installed there with this used computer in it is a crank start stall situation which means we're on the right path for diagnosing this properly. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'll show you what we got here. So this is the computer that's plugged into the vehicle right now and you see we have this uh, 8065361 alpha kilo that number not the letters but the numbers are the important part there and that does match the original number that we had this is a screenshot from the previous trip out here so that's a good thing all we have to do is update this all right guys we're all set we've got ourselves a runner running pretty smooth and if you take a look at the codes here those the only codes we got are for the window calibrations for the left and right front uh, window motor modules so we're looking pretty slick here we got the vin rewritten properly and we are good to go. We had to rewrite the VIN, reset the skim, make sure we had the right calibrations updated to the latest for our customer, and this thing was a runner. We were all good there. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch today. I hope everybody's doing well, and I do appreciate all of the input, all the people that were uh, pouring out the comments there. Be sure to look at yesterday's video, and you'll see all the comments, people helping out. I do appreciate that. You guys take it easy. Like, subscribe. Have a great day. Bye-bye.